this. I gotta grab my mic. So you've seen this enough. It's also on your assignment. Uh, generally, the assignment probably takes about three hours. It's probably what's going to take you. Okay. So um, please do not leave until Monday night. All right, because you're going to be stressed. Do on Tuesday. Do the same day as the test. Okay. So uh, this is intended to be your study. This is pretty much the only study you have to do. I will give you a review tomorrow if you want to go in depth on more things. Okay. But this is basically what the test is going to look like. Yes. Yes. Every single every single test video there'll be an assignment. A big giant assignment like this before. So that's I don't do like in some classes I do daily assignments in like my applied classes, but in my academic it's one assignment a unit and uh, it's meant to be done sort of on the weekend sort of before. Okay, so here we go. Uh, here is your warm up today. Today is September twenty fourth. Can I just run through this as quickly as I can, or do you guys want to play the review game? I sort of got to teach today. Will anyone be offended if I run through this fastly? Okay, instead of doing this, okay, because we've seen lots of these, okay? So I'm going to say A. Uh, find the vertex of that max. Now, even though I'm running through this as quickly as I can, uh, if you do not get the same answer or if you are unsure about something, please ask. Okay, just want this still for you guys to talk to me. Okay? So I'm going to say f of x is equal to uh, 4 bracket x squared minus 7 over 4x plus 1. That changes into negative 7 over 4 divided by 2 squared, which is negative 7 over 8 squared, which is 49 over 64. Next page. Well, because when you're dividing by 2, it's like times and by 1 half. Right? So like the denominator is going to be getting busy. <laughs> the denominator. Does the denominator get squared? I yeah. thought that it would go 2 fourths. I thought that's what no, because yeah, you don't well, later. Okay, but the thing is, like, we're not. Um, you're not like adding, so you don't need a common denominator here. So this is going to be like uh, <coughs> negative seven over four divided by two over one, which is negative seven over four times one half. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then we're going to say f of x is equal to four bracket uh, x squared minus seven over four x. Uh, plus 49 over 64 minus 49 over 64 uh, plus 1. So f of x is equal to 4 bracket x squared minus 7 over 4x plus 49 over 64 minus 49 over 16 plus 16 over 16. Okay, can someone please translate for me what just happened? Because this is the part that people always get confused at here. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Clear? No? Um, well, you have to take the negative 49 over 64 bracket. Okay. But you have to multiply it by the 4. Yeah. Um, and then once you have that, you. Wait, that is what I did. That is what I did. Yeah. I didn't multiply by 4. But what I just did, I'm just going to write the first term. So you can either multiply the numerator by 4 or divide the denominator by 4. So really, that could also I could have said that equals to 196 over 64, which in all terms is 49 over 16. I think most people want to work with a smaller number if possible. Where did the 16 over 16 come from? Can I go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. In common denominator there. Okay. So I'm going to say f of x is equal to 4 bracket x minus 7 over 8 squared. Excuse me, uh, minus 33 over 16. So my vertex of f of x is going to be uh, 7 over 8 and negative 33 over 16. And it opens up. The vertex of the inverse is going to be negative 33 over 16 and 7 over 8. Someone tell me which way it's going to open. And I'll show you why in a sec. If the original function opens upwards, oh, and which way is the uh, the uh, inverse going to go? Right. 
the right. Okay? Now, if you can't remember, I'll show you on the graph why that is. Okay, but if you need to, you can just think it's like hands on the clock, right? Up goes to right, and then down goes to left. So you think like it's going in a circle of the clock, if that will help you remember. Okay? If it doesn't, don't worry about it. You can use the graph. <laughs> Possibly the same way. Y is positive, X is positive, right? Y is negative, Y is X is negative, right? That will work. Okay. All right, so part B says graph f of X and f inverse X. This is going to be the messiest graph ever. Um, Karina, I'm going to embarrass you because you were asking me last night how you graph these messy fractions, right? Because especially something like this, this is awful. The way I told Karina to do it was you can estimate using a decimal. Okay, um, in the last step here when you're graphing, okay, because unless you're going to do your graph as every square is a 16, right, you're not going to get an exact graph. So, 7 over 8 is almost 1, 33 over 16 is a little over 2. So, my graph only has to go from there's positive 1, positive 2, uh, negative 1, negative 2, positive 1, 2, there's 1, whoops. And by the way, never do a graph like this on your test. Okay, but I just want to do it very, very fast. And Ari has been rubbing off on me here for the eight graphs, I think, this year. Okay. So, um, my first graph is going to be 7 over 8 and negative 33 over 16. 7 over 8 is 0 0.875, which is here. Negative 33 over 16 is down here. So, I, what I could do if I wasn't a math teacher, I would do it in my calculator. 32 divided by 16, and I would get... Uh, negative 2.0, whatever it happens to be. My mind's not working today. Okay. It opens upward, so it's going to go something like this. And I'll call that f of x. I guess I could have got the x-intercept or the y-intercept to put that on there, too. For the uh, inverse, okay, I'm going to do uh, negative 32 over 16 and 7 over 8, which is right about here someplace. It's going to open this way. And there's my graph. Now, this is one thing I just need to be clear for people. Why do I not care about the details for this graph? Why is the vertex the only point I need for this type of question? Can someone explain that? All right, go ahead. The question didn't say graph of four points. Yes, good. Okay, but just in general, for what's the, what are the. I'll just tell you, this will be easier. Basically, for this one, this it is good to say the four points method, but also because this graph just is based on domain and range. Okay, and the only point that affects the domain and range, x-intercepts and y-intercepts don't affect the domain and range. The only thing that does is the vertex for a parabola. Okay, so that's why the vertex is sort of the only key point. Okay, I'm going to turn this over to you guys right now. For the original parabola, which looks like this, what is the domain to make the inverse a function? Could someone be brave? Yes. Can you share that? Uh, it's such that x is bigger than x. So what I should probably say what we did there, which is correct, by the way. Basically, all that uh, Min Chan is using is this right there. Okay, so you see what he did there? He took the vertex. Okay, so look what I did with the black line. He's just using the one arm of it, just going to the right. Okay, so instead of using the entire both sides of the parabola, we're just going to use one side. Chris, question? Uh, yeah, I mean, you can take it. Oh, okay. So you could, yeah, so you're just going to do one of it. Yeah, go So when you, when we were like, studying, like, it wasn't X, and then it wasn't, it was like, the two numbers were X. Yeah, so that would be it if it was between two points. So let's say that the uh, line was something like this. Right, and that's like 2 comma 3, and this is, you'd say for that one, x is between 2 and 5. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay, can someone else tell me, please, what the range is going to be? Thank you, Minchan. What's the range going to be for this graph? Somebody else, please. Chris, go. Uh, y such that y is real numbers. No. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that. I meant to say, let's work together as a class. <laughs> Go ahead. Why is that Yeah, you're still using the red graph, right? So if you take a look, you can't have values down here, right? It's only going to about that. So my so range. We're not using the numbers. No, no, we're just using the. This is for f of x, right? Okay. Greater than or equal to, uh, what is it, negative 33 over 
Right, so if you read the question, what it said here is state that I'm in a range of half of x to the inverse of the function. Okay, now I'm not seeing a lot of hands today, and that's okay. I'm going to pick on all of you with Spider Man soon enough, Cassidy, don't worry. Okay, I'm going to go through letter D as quickly as I can. Letter D says find uh, f inverse. Okay, can somebody recite back from a few days ago what I wrote in big red letters on the board? Right? So go ahead. You have to start in vertex form. And I'm not allowed to yell at you because I'm a teacher, but I can type really loudly in big, bold, capital red letters, okay? So it's like me like screaming, shaking you like this thing, use your vertex, okay? That's what it is. I wouldn't <laughs> So I'm going to start in vertex form, which was going to be f of x is equal to 4. Uh, x minus 7 over 8 squared minus 33 over 16. Is that right? That's right to me. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to call that y equals 4. x minus 7 over 8 squared minus 33 over 16. y plus 33 over 16 equals 4 x minus 7 over 8 squared y plus 33 over 16 over 4 equals x minus 7 over 8 squared plus or minus the square root of y. Why did you switch x to y? Yeah. Oh. Because we're trying to find I was on autopilot there, I'm sorry. Yeah, I really should have this right here. So all these Y's are now access back in. I got too excited. The thought of me dancing to Charlie Rock in my shirt. This is to put it in, this is to find F inverse. That's what this is doing. This is the equation for f inverse. So then we're going to say f inverse x. Uh, thank you, RA. I would have looked back and said that looks weird. Uh, just a thing to remember here, and please don't let it be your first test. But let's say you're having a bad day like Mr. Sadler on the day of the test and things aren't clicking for you. Okay. We have, I think, uh, six tests. Seven or eight came. Because negative 7 over 8 here turns to plus 7 over 8 on the other side, right? You go flip them across. Uh, what I was trying to say, if you're in a bad day like Mr. Sadler say, and you get your x and your y's mixed up in your test, you have a poor first test, or a poor any test, you're allowed to drop your lowest test. Okay? So if you have, um, actually, I can't talk to me about the class. Or something. Um, no worries about that. Um, so uh, if you're having a bad, you know, have a bad test, then drop your lowest test, even if you don't have a bad test. Tests are all 99, 99, 99, 99, 98. And 98 is gone. Okay, right? So your lowest test automatically drops. Um, I don't do retests. So if you had a grade 10 teacher that let you write your test eight times until you got the marking you wanted, I'm sorry, that is not me. Okay, um, so sorry about that. Okay. All right, let's get started with today's lesson. Is this somewhat clear? No? Why, why do you say this and why that? Because it's an inverse. Inverse means flip. Because y is the same as f of x. Like it's your output for your function. X is what you put in, y is what you get out, right? So y plus f of x means the same. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It just, it just looks nicer when it's like that, right? Like, um, if, if I were to do this, Actually, we'll put up to anybody here because this is a good question. Why, hey guys, can I talk, please? Why would I not want it written like that? Why, where's the possible issue for that? No one sees an issue because I'm a perfect math writer. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll get it. Go ahead. Um, yeah, you, 7 or 8, you might think is square rooted. Like, I put the hook on it, but I've seen some of you write. No offense. Okay, right. if you're going on a test going at 100 miles an hour and you write it like that, 
it can be confusing to think what square root of what is. Okay, so if you learn like this, you're going to know for sure. The only stuff that's square rooted is there. It's not wrong. It's still right, but I, I would strongly recommend against it. Yes? Um, I should have asked this before, and I'm a little brain dead right now, but it's, so we had to find the domain and range for f of x. Yes. But for x <coughs> raised x is No. You have to find the domain and range of this so that when you turn it sideways, it's not a function. Right, because if I do this and I go here, that's not a function, right? If I'm like this, now we're good as a function. So you have to restrict it before you put it. That's what but then you used a vertex, so wouldn't it just be like a parabola instead of just one line? Well, it's half a parabola, though, right? Because that's why we did x is greater than, where are we here? That's where we did x is greater than 7 over 8. Because like, this is like the parabola, whatever we're doing here. If you go for this arm, this is 7 over 8 and negative 33 over 16, right? So this is, that arm is going to say x is greater than that now. Oh. Okay, then we do the inverse. It's only one arm that's being, is all there is in the problem, so you're fine then. Okay. One, two, three. Yes. Well, let's take the square root. If I say the square root of nine, the square root of nine is three and negative three. Right. So the way it works for a problem, this is positive square root, this is negative square root. So together it's a sideways parabola. Right? So you gotta do the full thing. Right, Joe? Yes. You can go now, go ahead. Okay, so I'm gonna pause this video and then we'll get started on today's lesson. This lesson is hideously important. I will in it.